All right, so uh, working on another video response here. Uh, Joe Fox has uploaded some stuff about the intentional community kind of changing into the Shofar Mountain 3.0. At the same time, in late 2012, I got involved with the Survival Retreat Project. I lied in a few videos in order to protect the uh, people in the location from some of the cyber stalking that I heard about uh, happening with other people's stuff in that time period. So we said it was Eastern Oregon, the reality is it was in Northern Washington. And the terrain was the same, so as far as the style of everything, it would be identical anyway. And it's the same uh, basic desert running all the way from Mexico up to the North Pole in that western strip, western western continental strip right there. And the uh, so the situation was part of a group that had existed back in the late 80s, early 90s. And... I have been involved in different types of communal, intentional community, group retreat things since I was a teenager, uh, and the only time off of that was uh, the period of time when I was in the active duty military, about five years, six years, uh, no, I was involved part-time when I was living in Marin County. Uh, I was involved in, with, with one part-time when I, when I lived in Marin County, California, and then I got my own little place going in Southern Oregon for a while, uh, but didn't, didn't really get people to join up. It was, it was basically living in a neighborhood of other people that were, that were survivalist-minded, and that situation was where I learned the whole get out of California, go to where the gun laws are friendlier thing is some real booby trap advice, um, but it was the predominant advice in the, in the 1990s, was, get, well, get out of California, it'll be better. Uh, the problem with doing that, especially if you're a gun guy, and you go to Oregon, well, they hate people from California, unless it's Portland and parts of Eugene. Uh, they hate you for being from California. It doesn't matter... If you're, you know, this is a promised land, this is where you're going to get along, this is where you're not going to have those racial problems because the demographic is going to match uh, much more cohesively. No, it's not, actually. They're going to find other excuses to have hatred. And there, uh, you'll see this with all these black people that think they're going to escape all these issues by going to Africa, and lo and behold, there's tribalism. Uh white people going to some of these all-white areas uh, from California, from uh, pluralistic areas, just expect to show up and say, I'm white, everybody else is white, we must all be cool. And then you find out, no, they, they don't like your last name. They don't like your family history. They don't like uh, some nuance in religion. Uh, they, they, they're going to have their issues. They're going to have their prejudices. Uh, I would tell you that if you... You have certain last names and you go to these parts of the Northwest where everybody's got kind of a Germanish name, okay, and your your family history doesn't quite match that with those people, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems like I did, uh, That especially when it comes time for them to decide that they're, you know, there's, there's going to be that issue. Uh, and that's where we come into the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. If they weren't white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, uh, you're you're going to run into people. You know, if you're Italian, Greek, East European, uh, white Anglo-Saxon Catholic. Okay, they're, 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 you might run into some issues with some of these people, and that's that's how they're going to be. All right. And the situations with the intentional communities, the one reason a lot of people who are in dispersed places on the internet are looking at the attractiveness of this thing is, if you've ever tried to go it alone in moving to some of these backwoods areas and realize what you run into, you, you want to be part of a group, you want to show up, land it in an intentional community, before investing your what what family wealth you might have in a homestead, okay, it's it's extremely important. You you go homesteading in an area where you find out that that those connections you had or the happy talk from the real estate seller, uh, that happy talk from the real estate seller isn't isn't going to be 
the truth with a lot of these situations if, if you're 40 miles from help when you need help, okay? You, you've got to actually have people, especially off the grid. Uh, I, I've known people that moved into off-grid areas in Northern California. Their place is constantly being staked out by the locals. They leave. They, 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 if you leave, if you left for a weekend, you'd come back, they would unbolt your well pump. I mean, they, that, it was that bad for one, for one guy that I knew. And some, somebody there comes up with their excuse to say that he had a demographic that didn't, didn't, it wasn't going to match. And, uh, uh, I, I kind of knew what it was. Dude was from San Francisco. He had a San Francisco accent. They assumed he was gay. Then he shows up with a hot, hot chick, and then they assume that she's underage, and and she wasn't. And so they they just you know, found their reasons to judge this guy and justify the little shit they were doing, which usually involved ripping him off. And and this guy ended up moving back to the city. Um, <coughs> for a lot of time that he was in uh, Lake County, California, he was involved with. Uh, an intentional community of, of kind of new agey type people that were overly political with a lot of their own little issues. And, and a lot of them were uh, uh, both amateur and professional psychologists. So they would like, uh, I, I forget what they call it, inventory or some, some, they had some fancy term for it that was basically the whole thing was a ripoff of uh, Scientology, but not Scientology. If, if you're going to get into Scientology, I'm one of the few people who would say, just go join the real Scientologist thing. Don't, don't deal with these people that are like a rip-off of Scientology. And a lot of it had to do with, I, who knows, you know, it, it's kind of like I don't really get all these 100% straight answers about whatever it is uh, Anonymous has against Scientology. Uh, but there's, there's groups out there that are basically, they're, ex-Scientologists or people who studied Scientology but they got a problem against them it's it's, it's kind of like these anti-Freemason Mason groups, the Illuminati groups that studied the Freemasons but they're not Freemasons but they do everything like the Freemasons and you know it, it, it gets complex with a lot of stuff um, so with these intentional communities it's a good thing and the reason a lot of people are going to inquire about that there's a lot of legitimate concerns. Like if we go out there, what do we do for, for a living? What do you have? I've been making videos about uh, you know, how to be the small man. Uh, I've been watching other people doing videos about the nomadic lifestyle. Do it, be the nomad. If you have a little group of nomads, and it's, this is where the magic of the uh, social media really works, is, is these little groups of nomads start figuring out what good stopover points are, where people are welcome, where it's going to work. Your next step is to get involved with one or more intentional communities, to, to use these little intentional communities as stopover points and understand that part of what's happening is matching the groups up with the individuals, individuals up with the groups, and the groups and individuals up with the locations. And that's, that's where we build this nation within a nation sort of a thing. Uh, it, the groups of the, the individuals, the, the groups and individuals with the locations, and then these things develop uh, uh, independence, interdependence with their own little thing and certain levels of sovereignty. A lot of volunteerism is necessary to develop that group cohesion. Uh, and there's two things you got to look for. One is volunteerism. Two is employing your own people. And sometimes they're, they're not the best people. Sometimes it's not the best deal. Uh, the volunteerism should strictly be to group assets uh, or group things that people have access to. Uh, probably one of the worst abuses I've seen, I'm checking my little timer on this, is when the volunteerism goes to somebody else's asset. And it's an asset that the volunteers no longer have access to once they are finished volunteering with this thing. And I'm going to go over into another video once I upload this and, and explain why that's so important. But uh, group cohesion, nomads who uh, were the individuals 
find a groups, the groups find individuals, these packages of individuals and groups find the locations, and then network those things. So we're, I'm going to talk about volunteerism in the next segment.